Our final segment focuses on the improved lives of Afghan women. Through education and improved basic human rights, Afghan women are making progress in a society where they were once marginalized. Under the severe religious laws enforced by the Taliban, women were pushed to the shadows and treated as slaves. They were not allowed in public without a male relative. Houses had blacked out windows so no one could see in and they were forced to wear the burqa. Education was an option reserved for boys and literacy rates among females plummeted. In 2001, 86% of Afghan women were considered illiterate compared to 56% of the men. While there were once over 500,000 females enrolled in schools, less than 50,000 were allowed to attend under Taliban rule. Women were no longer allowed to become teachers, so primary schools were shuttered due to a lack of educators. Only a handful of schools remained open, which forced some women to hold underground schools in the guise of sewing classes, but most girls received no education at all. You know what I want? I don't want to see guns. I don't want to see cannons. I don't want to see war. I don't want to see jail. I want to be free. I want my children to be free. We are sick and tired of guns and fighting. Today, education and women's rights have taken great strides to undo the damage. Seminars and classes teach women about their human rights. They attend schools and their enrollment numbers now reach over one million. In Kabul, this progress is seen at the Tutia School, which opened in 2013. The Tutia School project was undertaken to alleviate overcrowding and fill the need for more education. U.S. forces, in collaboration with the Afghan forces, renovated and painted the existing building, but also built a larger 16-classroom structure and boundary wall for safety. The school now employs 48 teachers and contains a nursery for both teachers and married teens. We have achieved something that for other countries took 30 or 40 years to get to. The international community has been with us and there is substantial cooperation in this regard. This pattern can be seen throughout the country. In 2001 to 2010, Afghan schools saw a seven-fold increase in enrollment, and 37% of current pupils are female. Education has not stopped at the primary school level. Universities are reopening and graduating women in every capacity. Women are making careers for themselves. Female police, soldiers, artists, entrepreneurs, politicians, medical professionals, television reporters, and factory workers are becoming more prevalent. While still a long way from the human rights we're used to at home, they are on their way to maintaining long-term improvements in their quality of life and that of the next generation. From security and human rights to infrastructure, the resilience and adaptability of the Afghan people proves that rebirth is possible even after 30 years of turmoil. If you would like to stay up to date on the latest stories in Afghanistan, you can follow U.S. Forces Afghanistan on Facebook. See you next time. Thank you.